important function that we haven't talked about until now is upload fingerprints. So let's assume that you are keeping an HR database here of users and fingerprints. Obviously you'll want to store those in FileMaker for retrieval later on and for use throughout the network and throughout the system. Naturally you'd want to protect this file at all costs because this is where the fingerprint digital data is stored. Although it's encrypted here, you don't want users to have access to that for manipulation and so forth. So you want to protect that in a, in a way that makes sense for you and your system. But once those fingerprints are in FileMaker and you quit FileMaker, those fingerprints are not available anywhere on the device or within the software. It's completely been removed. And the only way to get them back into the device in preparation for the identification process is that you have to upload them. So let's take a look at that script. What this will do is it will go to the layout where the fingerprints are stored and show all records. We get a quick count and then uh, we go back after that count is successful. If the count is zero, it just means, hey, we have no fingerprints to upload. This is just preliminary standard FileMaker logic. If there are fingerprints, we'll create a new window and we go to the layout where the fingerprints are stored, show all the records, and starting with the first record, begin to upload those to the device. Let's take a look at what that looks like. The actual command is add fingerprint to user. And what you're going to give it is the fingerprint user ID and the actual fingerprint container data that we stored earlier when we enrolled and the finger index in which to store that container data or that fingerprint data. So this literally uploads the fingerprints to the device and we're going through all the records and doing that in this manner through a standard loop. So that's uploading fingerprints. And once they're uploaded, then the system is ready to identify. So the identify process is really where you get to choose what you allow and what you don't allow. The purpose of this solution is to simply identify that that person is who they say they are. And it does it by way of their fingerprint. So let's take a look at the identify script. And this one, incidentally, is one of the simplest of all. We simply set the value in a variable and call the PCFP identify function and determine if it's a pass or fail. If it's a fail, we return an error. If it's a pass, we let them do whatever they need to do. In this case, in the demo, we're showing an unlock icon as a result of a pass, meaning we've identified you, you can now have access to the information. So the logic that you'll use is, is going to be under this section here which says, what, what do I want to validate? What do I want to verify and, and allow? And that really is the sky's the limit. So here's a script, too, that would be highly protected in a solution where you wouldn't want people to be able to play with the identify script as a result of uh, what it's going to allow. One important note about the identify function is that there's actually a parameter that you can use here. We don't use it in the demo, but it's certainly one you can use. And let just put it down here for clarification. Optional print count. This allows you to specify how many fingers you need to identify before allowing that user in. So let's say, for example, that a user has enrolled all 10 fingers. You may want to require two or more fingers in order to properly and definitively identify that user. So for example, we could say that we want to identify this user by requiring four fingerprint scans, successful scans, before allowing the pass-fail, before allowing them rights. In most cases, PCFP identify and a single fingerprint, which is the default, is good enough. And that's a look under the hood of the biometric fingerprint reader.